So um, it's still morning for me, but I know it's the middle of the night for other people. So good morning the next day. Um, so um, I am going to be speaking about the Canadian context, but because I'm a curator at the Royal Alberta Museum, I'm going to be speaking about the context in our province um, in, in Alberta. Um, because Canada is a very large country and uh, and there's lots of uh, of difference in terms of uh, the way that, that things happen across the um, the country. So thank you to all the previous speakers who spoke about masks. Um, lots of really good conversation about the, the changing perceptions of masks and we're, we're certainly going to get into that um, in, in my presentation as well. So one of the, um, the, the questions that Canadians have faced is whether or not to wear a mask. And our uh, chief public health officer, so the top doctor for Canada, did initially follow um, the evidence that said um, we didn't need to wear masks, whether medical or non-medical, um, because the, the evidence um, just uh, supported it for um, medical settings, for healthcare settings, and, and not necessarily for just going outside. Um, but only a week after that, on April 6th, the evidence had evolved, and so she recommended the use of, of masks to prevent transmission for people that are pre-symptomatic or asymptomatic. Um, and while she got a lot of flack about uh, this about face, this, this change of recommendation, government officials across the country repeated her advice. And of course, our, our top government official is uh, Justin Trudeau, uh, much loved by um, non-Canadians. So um, he was, became very famous for, for this quote uh, in his public briefing um, that recommended wearing a mask because it, quote, protects others more than it protects you because it prevents you from breathing or speaking moistly on them. Um, and, uh, and so this use of, of the word moistly, um, which has some, some kind of cultural connotations, it's a little kind of dirty, um, became really, really a meme. It, it literally, it went viral. So uh, these are just some of the, the things that um, uh, have, have popped up for sale. So there's mugs with quite a sexy picture of Mr. Trudeau. Um, there's t-shirts. Uh, a friend of mine actually made um, a, a needlepoint, a, a cross stitch of the phrase. Um, and, and people have really taken this and, and run with it. Uh, the, the designers of the t-shirts say, our prime minister is a never ending source of intentional, unintentional comedy. We are loving his most recent comedic installment. And it wasn't long until people started making the connection between speaking moistly and, and masks. So on the right, you see a vinyl decal, which you can buy for your car. You can put it in the window or just on top of the paint. Um, that obviously has a mask and says, talk moistly to me. And then um, a screenshot from a Facebook group called Mask Makers YYC. YYC is the airport code for Calgary. Um, I, I'll talk about them in a minute. But uh, so there's um, uh, printed cotton with lots of Canadian symbols like the bison and the beaver and the moose and the flag and parliament uh, buildings in Ottawa. And uh, she says, what do you think Mask Maker is perfect for Trudeau? I could make him for one for my stash. And, uh, you know, again, people, people really ran with this. So this is uh, a mask that we were actually able to collect for the museum. Uh, this is hand embroidered with the word speak moistly to me. Um, and uh, I particularly enjoy that um, the, the print also matches uh, the, the wearer's uh, sweater. So um, again, it, it reflects both the, the necessity of these non-medical fabric masks, but also the fact that people um, are, are kind of having a sense of humor around this, right? Um, that, that it's not just a, a scary coronavirus time, it's also something that um, people are, are running with um, in terms of uh, the pop culture element of it. And you, you go from the serious to the absurd. Um, this is yours truly on the left. I made fabric masks for myself and, and for my family because um, I'm like the only sewist, uh, sewist in the family. And then um, you also get these pop culture elements. So on the right, you have a picture of um, a Calgary restaurant. Um, it's kind of a landmark restaurant. It's called Chicken on the Way. It's on a major road. Um, and they have this huge oversized sculpture of a rooster um, on the roadside. And so they made this huge oversized coronavirus mask for the chicken, which 
hilarious. So it's a mascot with a mask. So the government of Canada did issue official um, mask designs. So there's a sew method, um, which is very similar to the uh, CBC um, recommended mask, which uh, the pleats are just basically the gathers from, from where you put the, the ear loops in. There's also a couple of no sew methods where you can turn a t-shirt or a bandana into a mask. Julia, we but, don't um, there's also have... been uh, the Department of Human Ecology studies humans and their near environment. Sorry, you can't hear me. Yeah, no, there, there was there was this gap, you know, you started to speak about, you know, those designs for mask uh, sewing yeah. and then disappeared. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the uh, the Department of Human Ecology at the University of Alberta um, has a couple of researchers that that work on improving some of these designs for accessibility. So um, one of the designers uh, came up with um, a mask that is good for people that wear glasses. Um, it also can be bathed in salt water to protect against microbes. Um, the other researcher, uh, Dr. Strickfadden, worked with some um, textile science researchers and a designer um, to adapt uh, a mask design that was already out there for a better fit, particularly the ear loops can accommodate people that wear um, hearing aids, um, and also includes a polypropylene layer. Polypropylene is the material that is used in reusable grocery bags. So as to up the, the filtration when you can't get a medical grade filter to insert into your mask. Um, and there's, there's been a huge amount of voluntary uh, contributions. We've heard about them um, all day. In, in Calgary, there is a Facebook group called Mask Makers YYC. And um, this is a group of people who uh, be, began to band together to um, create non-medical PPE for uh, healthcare workers or frontline workers. Um, they were really concerned about shortages uh, in, in March. Um, and because there was still this, this change in attitude about whether or not masks were okay to wear, um, the administrators divided up the task. So what you see here is a completed mask, but actually um, people were involved in, in creating the nose wires, in pre-sewing the fabric, um, a couple of businesses got together to um, pre-cut and wash the, the fabrics and other people were drivers, other people became um, hosts of, of drop-off locations, etc. <laughs> and the, the number of things that people are putting together is enormous. So over 20,000 masks um, were sewn as of, um, as of Monday, actually. Um, and, and this is starting in, in March. So some volunteers really came up with over 500 masks other people um, created scrub caps, uh, which have buttons for the ear loops. They also provided PPE um, for um, workers, frontline workers um, that, that were not provided it. So we had a, a public scandal about the Cargill meat processing plant, which was um, a center of infection because the company failed to uh, follow the recommended measures for distancing and uh, you can also buy um, masks from, from local makers, whether those are, are independent craftsmen or on the right, you see masks that are being produced by a franchise of dry cleaners. So you're going there for clothing anyway, so you might as well uh, pick up a mask. And then there's people that sew the old fashioned way. So they're literally dusting off their old Singer sewing machines um, bragging about how well they're working. And uh, at the museum, we actually created a tutorial on how to use uh, your antique sewing machine to, to sew one of these masks because it is easy enough that you could do it on a 1920s machine that only does uh, a straight stitch. So just to end with, I want to discuss the Indigenous response to COVID-19. Um, masks are a really important part of um, many Indigenous ceremonies and rituals across North America. Um, in Alberta, we've had a number of um, artists and, and craft people who have created these, these artistic masks. So on the left, you see uh, Amy Willier, who's created this beautiful traditionally beaded mask. And then she actually runs a company that, that sells um, 
native designs. And so she's created um, fabric masks that, that have uh, similar beaded patterns on them. And you have another uh, indigenous craftswoman, um, Tamara Cardinal, wearing one of those. Um, Ruth Uphand is well known for her artistic interpretations of uh, disease microbes in beaded form and she transformed um, that into uh, these N95 medical masks um, as, as part of an ongoing artistic project that talks about um, disease and uh, indigenous culture. And then there's um, a Facebook group of indigenous craftspeople that share these artistic um, interpretations of the masks. So again, these are not meant to be worn to, to be protective, um, they are meant as an expression of Indigenous culture and crafts and a response to um, the ongoing kind of healthcare crisis uh, amongst Indigenous peoples in Canada. So this one is made out of um, canned deer hide and, and beaded. Um, it, the, the motifs are, are, are very meaningful to the designer. Um, this one equally is also made out of deer hide and, and comes with, um, with a, a traditional neck adornment. This one I love. This is a child's mask, and it's uh, it's a dandelion, and of course you can't kill dandelions, so it's about um, uh, persistence and and about survival, really. So I I know I kind of went through that uh, very quickly, but uh, yeah, that's yeah. Uh, that's my talk. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Yule. Uh, comments, questions. I can see yes, there are a couple of uh, comments on uh, yes on in chat. Uh, Heather, uh, I just looked on Redbubble and there are some speak mostly options for face masks. <laughs> and Hannah Rowe, here in the UK have community mask trees which have sprung up, trees where people leave homemade masks and bags attached to branches for people for free. That's in right, because some of these fabric masks that are being produced um, uh, commercially are actually quite expensive. They're they're like fifteen dollars each, which which is a lot of money given that a lot of volunteer organizations are are giving them out for free. And we talked about the the class differences and the access differences, and and that's certainly uh, the case for for a lot of people in Alberta as well. There are certainly people who simply cannot afford uh, fifteen dollars to buy a, a mask, and so it's wonderful that there are these volunteer organizations that that do. Um, provide them. Um, yes, I need to speak moistly mug, absolutely. Um, uh, I just also wanted to point out about the, the Breathe Collective. Um, they have had a really interesting response to the Black Lives Matter protests as well. And so a couple of artisans, um, because the name of the group is Breathe, um, they've also created masks that say, I can't breathe. Mm -hmm. um, which is uh, a really um, interesting dialogue between uh, two very oppressed and, and persecuted uh, minority groups in, in Canada and in North America. Interesting point. Yes, well, we have quite uh, a lot of comments uh, thanking you for the paper and images. Claire Rose, yes, thanks you for the images, yeah, because otherwise we have, yeah, we would, we would have never seen them. Uh, right, let's see if uh, Teresa, uh, uh, yeah, great presentation. The indigenous communities in the Midwest USA are also making masks in response to COVID-19 and police brutality too. So it seems like these are two interconnected with each other. Uh, right, okay. Uh, Yes, uh, Hazel Clark, uh, uh, there are many connections in many papers to the wider context in the US, which of course, no time to develop today. Another event, yes, <laughs> why not? So we need to, yes, to think about the context in Russia and we certainly do have those contexts for sure because we have some, you know, uh, processes here. We're approaching, yes, election on constitution. Nobody understands, well, everybody understands why uh, we have to uh, to vote for uh, the change we don't really want to but uh anyway thank yeah uh julia uh uh well uh it's not to uh ah Elsa, uh, julia it, it's you yes you are asking uh, it's me Elsa, okay? <laughs> ah, okay yes yes i just noticed that elsa is uh, is knitting and i want to see what yes. she's knitting. <laughs> okay to the studio please <laughs> 
in this mm. the time of COVID, I can knit the, the great things. So I decided to knit a whole, like a play. Oh, um, wow. At a wool. So every time I have meetings, I can sit with this uh, great piece. So, yeah, that's right. it. Yeah. COVID <laughs> is a creative time. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Yulia, for the paper.